So Pierre, thanks for the tasting. Um, it's great to be in BA in a friend's uh, kitchen of all places. <laughs> yes. But uh, it was great to taste uh, mostly, you know, 2023. And uh, the wines are showing beautifully. But you explained that it's a short year. It was a tough, tough year because of frost. It's a very difficult year. In, in a way, I feel very grateful because over the last 20 years, we only had one super impactful frost, which was in 2022. So, of course, impacted the vintage 2023 because we're in the southern hemisphere. We lost 60% of the production for the reds and we lost 70% of the production for the whites. But, you know, we are within an ecosystem that is really friendly to viticulture. So whatever was left, we really like what, what we have in the vintage. Well, the wines show incredible energy and brightness. And, you know, regardless of a smaller crop, they're really high quality. And how would you compare 23 to past vintages and where do you think you know your quality is down but in terms of the character of a vintage i think it reminds me a little bit of 2010 and 2013 in terms of this electric vibrancy of of, of the profile of the wines in the character i find the wine to be electric i find them to be very zingy and find them to be fruit forward uh, but not overly fruity i think that um um it's 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 a smaller vintage. I mean, I could almost sound like Bordeaux right now, but it's a smaller vintage. But I think it's a it's it's a very very good vintage, of course. But you're not really worried about going the distance, really. You were just saying earlier that it's all about drinkability and pleasure right from the beginning. Yeah, for us, you know, like we we've always chosen this route of organic and biodynamic farming. And then we have a separate cuvee line, which is called Sina Sulfra, which means sulfur free, which you've tasted one today. So we've really seen a gradual uh, evolution of the wines, but I think that's has been primarily highlighted by the work on the soils and also the, the different enlivage that we've implemented through the years. So we find our, ourselves nowadays to find wines that are far more precise, I think because the soils are fluffier and the root system could go even deeper, so there's a more balanced soils. I think we have refined, we at least find the right balance in the cellar in the sense that there's no new oak. All the oak is two, three, four, five, six years old. And then we have a cement and amphora component. So all the wines are 33% amphora, 33% cement and 33% use oak. So we managed really to leverage not only the climatic condition that we have, but the subterranean minerality that we find in Chakra. And we managed to, to release it by doing a lot of soil works and also finding the right containers that were able to promote and enhance the crunchiness of the wines, as opposed to dumb them down and deprive them from the energy. I'm thinking of how the wines sometimes think when the, old, the oak is a little bit too old, and it's not very clean. You have this brownness taste. I taste in colors typically, and I, and I find that in that specific element, the, the energy of the wine gets reduced. So by changing all of that through the years, uh, I think we managed to get to this point of real vibrancy, crunchiness, transparency, and we're really helped by the salinity in our soils that comes into the wines and then it gives you this impression of freshness and, and acidity almost, which is not unusual when you have such a saltiness in your soils. So surprise vintage for us, it was catastrophic in the spring when we lost uh, all of uh, our crop, 70% for the whites, uh, 60% for the reds. It was a very surreal vintage, to, truth to be told, because there were a lot of dead spaces in the, in the cellar during the, during the harvest. Never happened before. But we are kind of uh, humbled and incredibly stoked by the end result. Well done. Thank you. Great tasting, great wines. Thank you.